Holy Week is invasive. <laughs> it's meant to be. It's meant to take away all of our defenses against deity who comes to us in ways that, because we are his disciples, cannot resist. That's what we see in the Gospel of John. I feel it in me. I'm on a plane. It's Monday, just a few days ago, flying down here to Orlando, and I'm thinking, okay, I have to get in the zone to get ready for Holy Week. There has to be a kind of shift in me because I have to be ready for God to come into places that I would rather keep at a distance from Him. Because, you see, it is possible, and all of us, I think, know this in our heart, to actually live our lives and even practice our Christianity that actually is a defense against the love of God rather than an expression of our hunger for Him. You know, there's a, a thing that happens with people who want to be your friend but keep you at a distance. And what they do is that they will tell you things, perhaps even intimate things, but not the deepest, most intimate things as a way to both gain your comfort, confidence, but know that what they're really doing is actually not letting you hear, but maybe letting you hear. Because the deep things have yet to be shared. Even though you come across as an extraordinarily open person, different from most who, when you say, how are you? Oh, fine. No, instead they said something a little bit more personal that feels like an invitation, but you are being deceived. Because what they're really doing is just drawing you in so that they can receive your attention, not be your friend. That's how I feel like I treat God sometimes. That I practice my devotions, I offer my prayers, but there can be places in my heart that I still want to protect from this profoundly boundary-breaking, invasive love. And I know that come today, this is where it stops, or at least recedes. You see, Jesus has a secret weapon in his call for us and to us. He sees the defenses, and he comes anyway, because he knows that Behind the defense is something else, and it is the cry in our heart for him. And he knows it's there because, in fact, he's the one that placed it there. Before you were in the womb, I knew you and called you. And that it is that deep thing within us that has been placed by the sovereign hand of God, the cry that is the deepest cry of our hearts, not for rebellion, but to finally be found. And so Jesus, seeing the, oh, do not wash my feet, just presses in anyway, because he sees something behind the defense that is in fact calling him to us. And it is his call that he has placed there. So, a part of me is both afraid and relieved that somehow my rebellion does not win, even though it is precious to me to have it. Because what happens? Jesus comes with great authority, knowing that he has come from God and is going to God. There's a... Actually, he's almost a heretic. <laughs> that I found a quote. A Syrian church leader and preacher. It shows how slippery this all can be. But he describes perfectly what is happening in these verses. This is from the 4th century. Severian Assyrian. He who wraps the heavens in clouds wrapped round himself a towel. He who pours water into rivers tips water into a basin. He before whom every knee bends in heaven and earth and under the earth 
kneels to wash the feet. This is the man who would eventually come to oppose John Chrysostom and have him condemned. It is possible, you see, to get some things right but still say no. Don't we know that in our hearts, you see? That's why I quote it. Because that couldn't be. Except, except, somehow by an act of mercy that is stronger than my own will, God looking past even the rightness of my theology that still keeps me at a distance from Jesus and calls me to himself and pours out water on my feet, touching the in-between places in my toes that I don't want anybody to touch. I had to laugh. There was some post on Facebook. Somebody said, well, I know Monday Thursday is coming up, so I've got a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> or even the Eucharist about which we are to partake. Do we understand what is being asked of us and what is being offered? That we come in with these soiled hands of ours and we place them like this. The bread of life is placed in our hands and we literally ingest into the very depths of our own digestive system, body and soul, the very presence of Jesus himself received as we partake of bread and wine. If you've got boundary problems with God, you lose. But thank God. Thank God you lose. Because I, I want to lose in this fight, you see. Oh Lord, not just my feet, but my head and my hands also. There is a cry there for a completion of something in here that God has placed within us. This restlessness, this knowing that somehow, even in the midst of our practices, not all things are right. And we don't know what to do. And the only answer is a deeper level of experiential union of what God has put in us, released more deeply in and through us, so that in this topsy-turvy, crazy world, we can walk with people that somehow, even if in the smallest of ways, embody a similar level of both servanthood and poise. Poise because we know whose we are. Servanthood, because we know whose we are. To even in small, unbroken, some broken ways, the love that is expressed. C.H. Dodge, C.H. Dodge in his commentary on John makes a point that just struck me. He said the whole first part of the Gospel of John is Jesus out there, and the key terms are life and light. It's evangelistic. I am the light of the world. But come 13, and through the end of the gospel, light and life recede. The key term is not those now. It's love. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end, meaning perfectly. And it is into that love that we are, in fact, taken. Taken. That in so receiving that love, we might stand as people who proclaim light and proclaim life. Because we can only proclaim those things if that love has broken into the deepest defenses of our hearts and caused us to walk with servanthood and poise in the midst of a world that hungers deeply, even as they too rebel against the very things they long for. So, this is an invitation. An invitation to begin to put feet and walk toward the one who offers bread and wine, who washes feet, to say yes to the cry that is within and to try, if at all possible, by mercy, to be able to put over here some of our defenses against the very one for whom we long, that we, in fact, might be healed and be his in the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.